Hi there, and welcome to my third video in what I'm calling my Heathrow Airport Hotel Trilogy. Tonight I'm staying at Heathrow Airport Terminal 5, as I'm heading off to Central Europe by British Airways quite early tomorrow morning. So this gives me the ideal opportunity to review Terminal 5's on-site hotel, the five-star luxury Sofitel. Terminal 5 is Heathrow Airport's most modern terminal, built in the year 2008, and it's located on the far western side of the airport and has its own rail and road links. If you're arriving by car, ensure that you follow the signage for Terminal 5 from the motorway system and not Heathrow Airport other terminals. The Sofitel is a fairly prominent structure and is clearly signposted from the traffic roundabout as soon as you enter the terminal territory. Quick warning that Heathrow has a new drop-off fee per visit. Your car number plate will be read by an ANPR camera and you must pay £5 in the drop-off zone by midnight to a website or you will receive an £80 fine in the post. Think you can get around this by dropping off your friends or family in front of the hotel? Well, think again. The hotel has vehicle control barriers at its entrance and it will cost you £7 to drop off in front of the Sofitel. Remember, these fees are to save the planet. They're not a blatant rip-off for profiteering reasons, are they? Now, if you're staying at the hotel, then you exempt the drop-off charges. However, that is no economy when you look at the fees for parking in a hotel's car park. If, after all that, you are still intending to arrive by car, then this is what you'll find, the Sofitel main entrance. Not very sexy for a five-star luxury hotel, is it? It kind of resembles an NHS hospital accident emergency department. The entrance is another part of the hotel that doesn't quite meet the standards of a five-star hotel. There is no doorman on duty, and if you're lucky, maybe a porter or two. But be prepared to move your luggage yourself to check in. Arriving by car is a miserable experience. However, I think that's confined mainly to us Brits. For my non-British viewers, I think, balance of probabilities, you're going to be arriving at the airport by aircraft. And therefore, I'll show you how to get to the hotel from Heathrow Terminal 5 arrivals. Good news, it's quick, it's a 10 minute walk and it's easy. Let me show you. Once you clear customs and immigration and find yourself in the arrivals area of the terminal, simply turn right and then head to the furthest set of elevators following this sign. These are the elevators that you're looking for. Either one will do. In the elevator, hit level one. The hotel is labelled, but it's not very clear. You might miss it, particularly if the elevator is packed with people. At level one, when you get out of the elevator, you'll see this sign for the Sofitel. You simply follow the sign and the corridor for about 150 metres. It will take you five minutes. So I'm going to speed this up for you. Eventually, you'll arrive here in the upper lobby of the Sofitel shared with sixth car hire. From here, you just take either the escalators down to the ground floor lobby or the lift. This is the main reception lobby. So behind me is the main entrance to the hotel, which I showed you earlier in the video. The check-in desks and check-in agents are directly to the front. The priority check-in for our priority core and VIPs is to the left, and rear right off camera is the concierge desk. Although the outside of the hotel is quite drab, admittedly, once you get into the lobby, you'll get a feel for the style and decor of the hotel. Super modern, in fact quite futuristic, with lots of marble, glass and chrome. I quite liked the aesthetic of the fountain and the sculptures that you found while waiting to check in, although the lighting can be a bit harsh, particularly if you've been on a transatlantic flight. And this is where the review nearly took a different direction and me and the soft hotel nearly got off on the wrong foot. So I arrive at the check-in desk and there is no queue and no queue here sign. So I stand in front of the desk waiting for the next check-in agent to become available. To my left is a couple doing likewise. While we're waiting, several other people arrive and decide to stand on the left waiting to check in. So just as my check-in agent was about to become available, a porter with a large family and their luggage pushes past me telling me to join the back of the queue. The bloody cheek of it. I'm guessing that this family have given this porter a large tip to fast track them through to the desk. And just as I'm about to channel my inner Marcellus Wallace, thankfully the girl from the priority check-in desk came running over and intervened. Even though I'm not a Platinum Core member, she completely saved that situation. So well done, miss, whoever you are. 
Anyway, the girl in the priority check-in desk uh, checked me in and recovered the situation. She was professional and friendly, and I can't fault her service there. She redeemed the whole situation. Anyway, let's go and look at my room, which is located on the ground floor. Well, here we are then. After what I would consider quite a fractious check-in, which was completely rescued by the brilliant girl behind the priority check-in desk, uh, she came grabbed me out of the queue, checked me in, showed me the room. Brilliant uh, customer service. You've saved the reputation of the hotel single-handedly. Anyway, we move on. Here we are in the room. This then is a luxury club room in the Softel London Heathrow. Let's take a look around and see what our money buys us. Starting our room tour then, looking back up towards the main door to the hotel corridor. On the left is the bathroom door and to the right the storage and vestibule. Now, the vestibule has a large vanity mirror and also coffee and tea making facilities on a marble shelf. Yeah, this is a bit 1990s Sofitel really, isn't it? Now, maybe I've been spoiled in other five-star hotels, but I would have expected to have had a, an espresso machine in this room. Not a tray of coffee and tea sachets that would be more at home in Mrs Miggins's guest house. We've turned back on ourselves now, and on the right is the bathroom door, as we move into the main living space. As you can see, the bedroom layout is a fairly standard hotel layout, with a king-size bed, which is very large and comfortable, and it also has side desks to the bed and a work desk. The lighting is both bedside and ambient. For a Sofitel and a luxury club room in a Sofitel, I found this room quite small, but... We are on the airport here, and it's not really comparable with other larger soft hotels. The in-room entertainment is a very nice 40-inch LCD TV with numerous cable channels, which is unusual for hotels in the UK. And also the desk has USB HDMI connectivity. The bed, which is the main reason you're here after all, is a king size, which is quite large it is very comfortable and i'd say it's medium firmness if you have back issues i certainly found it a comfortable sleep the work desk is more than adequate plenty of fixed line connectivity usb hdmi etc but as most of us now work wirelessly let's take a look at the hotel's wi-fi that you get with the room the hotel wi-fi is complimentary so i'm going to use global speed test here as i usually do to dip sample the data speeds available in the room and actually, the speed results are surprisingly very good. 74 megabits per second download and 96 megabits per second upload, which is fairly fast, particularly for a hotel. So well done, Sofitel. 9 out of 10 for your Wi-Fi. Moving on, let's take a look at the hotel room bathroom, which can make or break a room review for me. First impressions, well the bathroom's not huge, but it certainly is very stylish. And apologies for me being in shot, it's absolutely unavoidable with that mirror. Remembering that this is a luxury club room, and I think you'll find that the standard rooms don't have all the bells and whistles that you find in here. As you'd expect, the bathroom comes with a plethora of fluffy towels and complimentary toiletries, although they're not designer branded. The bathroom is marble clad throughout and has heavy duty ceramic fittings. The far wall has a wall-to-wall -wall fitted vanity mirror with an inset bathroom television. On the right hand side fitted to the wall is a heated makeup mirror which is adjustable, a hotel telephone and also a plug socket for shavers and other electric items. The toilet pad is nothing to write home about and there is no bidet in this bathroom. What I really do like about this bathroom is the mirror mounted LCD bathroom TV which has the same amount of channels as your main bedroom TV has. It's fantastic for relaxing in the tub and the tub is full size, not the small bird baths you find in some hotel rooms. If you're not into baths or you're in a rush, there is also a full size shower enclosure in the bathroom with a cascade shower, which is fantastic. Overall, I did enjoy the bathroom and I'd grade it eight out of 10 in my opinion. My only complaint is that it is slightly small for a five-star hotel. But then again, as I've already said, we are an on-airport hotel, not in a city centre. Which follows on that as an airport hotel, you won't be expecting much of a view from your hotel room. And you won't be disappointed then, because this is the view from mine. A super view of the Heathrow Terminal 5 transport network. In this view, you can just about make out the personal transport pods to and from the external car park. Okay, so that was the hotel room. What do you think? 
Me, personally, I loved it. But I'm an Accord member. I love the Sofitel anyway. How did I find the room? Well, firstly, I'll carry that by saying it's slightly smaller than I was expecting. Not hugely. And remember, this is an on-airport hotel in London Heathrow Airport. But you compare this, for instance, with the five-star Sofitel Dubai Obelisk, it's about a quarter the size. I'm not complaining, it's more than enough for a couple. But what you do get with the Sofitel is the room is absolutely immaculate. Can't fault it. All the fixtures and fittings appear brand new. The bed is crisp, perfectly made down. The room smells absolutely gorgeous and all the surfaces are highly polished. But what I do like about this room is the bathroom. The bathroom is immaculate. Certainly worth it for the uh, extra money for the luxury room. Now, I would imagine you would get something similar in one of the standard rooms, but, but smaller. You don't get this anywhere else at Heathrow Airport. So for that reason, it's probably worth it, the extra money, to come and stay here. However, if you're just transiting in and out, probably not worth stumping up the extra money for the luxury room. Now, what you do get with the luxury room, and as a core member, is access to the club millisecond. That's worth it uh, for the room rate alone. You can pay from a standard rate to access the club, but I think it's £75 a night extra, and that's really not worth it. Remember, you get club access with the luxury rooms. Right, I'm going to tour the rest of the hotel now and tell you what I think about the hotel in general. So, out of the room, back into the hotel corridors. Now, I found the hotel corridors very stylish, but they're also a bit dark and foreboding. A bit too dark, although I think it's deliberate to fit in with the style. However, there are brightly lit seating and work areas in alcoves if you need a bit of peace and quiet to yourself. Now I'm settled into the room, the next thing on the agenda is dinner tonight. So I'm already pre-booked into the fine dining restaurant in the hotel, La Belle Epoque. There are two restaurants in this hotel, La Belle Epoque, which is fine dining and expensive, and Vivre, which is slightly less expensive. If you want cheap eats, my tip is to go back into the terminal concourse where you can find various chain restaurants. You'll already know from my channel that I'm not a food or wine snob, and I just want to show you the inside of this restaurant, my experience of it, and actually what I ordered, for your interest. The decor in the Belle Epoque is modern and a mix of classical, and you don't really notice the industrial nature of your surroundings, which I'll highlight at the end of uh, my meal. I have to say, though, that the service was absolutely spot on, and the waiting staff seemed genuinely friendly, which you don't always find in um, fine dining restaurants. They even helped me out with a dish selection. The a la carte menu is not huge, but you'll find meat dishes, fish, vegetarian and vegan dishes to choose from. I think there's enough for every palate. And this was my choice for starter, sea bass ceviche. I think Patrick Bateman in Dorsia would approve, if you get that reference. Followed up with this main course, which was braised ox cheek with vegetables, which was very nice. My bad, I forgot to photograph my dessert for you, which was a chocolate tart with Chantilly cream, which was absolutely lovely. Also, in the meal, I had two fairly expensive glasses of Chablis. My choice, there were cheaper wines available. So what did it cost me? Well, the wine bill was £40, my choice, and dinner bill £65. Together with the gratuity and tax, it was about £120. Now, I ate alone, if you're a couple, I would budget for about £150 to £200 for a meal between two of you. Now, I really enjoyed the belly pork and the meal I had. It was top rate. But like I said, there are much cheaper options available in Terminal 5 for eating. This is then a view of the Belle Epoque taken from a mezzanine walkway. And you can see what I mean about the futurist versus classical style of the restaurant. After dinner, I had planned to visit the executive lounge, Club Millicene. But it was closed, and more about that in a minute. So I took the better option, which is the hotel's feature bar and lounge, the Sphere Bar. Actually, the Sphere Bar is very down to earth and exactly what you want from an airport hotel bar. No snobby dress codes, no pretentious guest mixologists, somewhere we can simply have a drink and chill. The bar has good waiter service and an excellent ambience. Now, drinks are standard London prices. My British viewers will know exactly what that means. The ambience is good, and I think it's human nature that we tend not to look up once we're settled in our environment, because if you do, you'll notice that you're in a huge futuristic cube environment with a bar overlooked by various mezzanine balconies and rooms. 
Also, I was really impressed they had Czech Staro Prime and beer on draft, which is ideal, bear in mind I'm flying to Eastern Europe in a few hours. I certainly didn't stay up late, I had a very early start in the morning, which is just as well because when you head back to your room, you find the corridors are quite dark. With an 08.30 flight departure for Terminal 5, I really didn't have much time to enjoy the hotel in the morning. But I'll show you breakfast and I'll then show you some of the other features in the hotel that I didn't have time to visit. Breakfast was included in my room rate, but if you are going to pay for it separately, it will cost you £25 per person. It is served from 06.30 onwards in the second restaurant in the hotel, Vivre. Breakfast is a buffet style and unlike some five-star hotels, there is no need to book breakfast in a soft hotel. I don't really have much to say about breakfast, as it's exactly as I would expect it in a hotel of this quality. It is a continental or full English buffet with waiter service for coffee and tea. There is a chef service for fresh omelettes and eggs on demand. OK, not very exciting, but absolutely faultless. But bear in mind, this is 06.30 in the morning, and I expect this restaurant will be much busier by 8 o'clock. And this was my choice of breakfast, a full English buffet. Yeah, I can feel you judging me. Right, let's talk about the Sofitel Executive Lounge, Club Millicene. Now, if you've watched my video on the Sofitel Dubai Obelisk, you'll know that I'm a really big fan of the Club Millicene. But the Executive Lounge in this hotel was really poor. Firstly, the night I arrived, it was closed. OK, it was open in the morning, but really, you look inside, it's just a boring private room with free coffee and newspapers. Yeah, I was really disappointed with Executive Lounge here. I didn't use it, even though I had automatic access with my room rate. This is a club bill of scene when it actually is open, when it's supposed to be. Advertised features being closed early in this hotel seems to be a common feature. And I was informed by one of the girls who works here that this is because the soft hotel cannot recruit enough staff to run all these facilities. Club Millicene was not the only facility that seemed to suffer from this staffing crisis. Also closed when I visited was the hotel's lobby bar, the Bar Parisienne. Again, this is what it's supposed to look like, and it was closed during my stay. And likewise, so was the spa and gym closed. Now, not that I wanted to use the spa at all, but I would have quite liked to have used the gym equipment. Again, denied. Theoretically, if it's open when you uh, visit, this is what you'll find in the spa. A small pool, a whirlpool, and also um, light gym equipment. Not much to write home about, really, is it? Finally, though, I'll show you something that is open. The lobby seating area that has its own in-house coffee shop called T5, which was staffed all the time and very attentive, brought me coffee almost as soon as I sat down. So, well done for that. OK, then, to finish off our video... And to summarise this tour of the Sofitel London Heathrow Terminal 5, let's look at the pros. Firstly, it is a very modern five-star hotel, which it deserves, and has mostly excellent customer service and certainly enthusiastic staff. The hotel rooms are modern and immaculate and have very fast Wi-Fi, which is a bonus if you work in the digital economy like I do. Both on-site restaurants are absolutely excellent and food service spot on. And also, special mention goes out to the Sphere Bar, which has an absolute excellent atmosphere. Overall, do I recommend that you stay here? Yes, it is still the best on-airport hotel at Heathrow Airport. And it's ideal if you're travelling out of Terminal 5 early in the morning, like I am today. But it is five-star, and that does come at a cost. My room rate, including breakfast, cost me £300 a night. Now, if that's a bit too pricey for you, check out the other on-airport hotels that I've also reviewed, the Hilton and the Air Hotel, and you can find them at the end of this video. That concludes my tour and the review of the Solvatel London Heathrow Terminal 5. Now, if you found this review useful, please, you know the drill, like, comment and subscribe so other YouTubers can find it. Also, if you are subscribed to my channel, my channel is now getting quite busy. So in the future, I'm only going to do hotel reviews on my secondary vlog channel, and you can find that in the end screen. Finally, I'm going to follow R2D2 here, to the British Airways check-in and head off to Eastern Europe. Bye now.